Good morning, everybody. Naturalist Kirk here with Lowry at Home. This is our very final episode of the fall season of Lowry at Home. Starting up next week will be our winter season. As you can see, winter sort of already took a bit of a head start here in Minnesota. Before the snow fell, Naturalist Elise went out over to Lake Minnetonka to film some mystery animals she wants to tell you all about. So without any further ado, we're gonna send things over to Elise, who's gonna tell you more about a little mystery bird that we're gonna learn more about today. Take it away, Elise. Hi, this is Naturalist Elise, and I'm here at Lake Minnetonka. Now, I've been driving past Gray's Bay for years and always wondered, why are there these big groups of small black birds out on the lake. I mean, they look like ducks, but then they're not really exactly ducks. Let's take a close look and see what we can find. Looking out onto Gray's Bay, County Road 101, you can see this big group of black birds with white beaks that I was talking about. Now, there's so many of them, possibly at least a hundred, but I've seen as many as a thousand right here and on other bays of Lake Minnetonka or on Parker's Lake in Plymouth. Uh-oh, come back. I want to take a close look at you. So it's a small black bird with a white beak. White beak black bird in large groups. Some of these folks on the shore of the lake are kind of scaring them away. They like to be in a big circle, a big group called a raft. They're a close relative of rails and a really close relative of the common gallinule. Now that you know that this bird is the American coot, let's find out some more about it. I wonder why we never hear about this bird. We hear a lot about mallard ducks and wood ducks. Are hunters not interested in these birds? Well, that's just the thing. American coots don't have much meat on their bones, so hunters are actually not very interested in the coots. They're just not worth their time most of the time because they don't have much meat on their bones. I guess that's a good thing if you're a coot. They dabble and they dive. Dabbling means they just poke their head underwater to get some food. Diving, of course, is when they dive down to get some food. They eat plants and aquatic insects. Sometimes the coots will do just a short migration a little ways to the south. Other coots will go all the way to Central America, so they're gathering together in big groups, getting ready to migrate south for the winter because our lakes here freeze. If they can find a spot that doesn't freeze, they may not migrate at all. Why do more work when you don't have to? Here, we can see them even closer, a little bit smaller than mallard ducks. If you're lucky enough to see an American coot on land, they look a lot like a chicken. And they have little chicken-like feet with lobes on them. And instead of having webbed feet like a duck to help them swim, these lobes on their toes are kind of meaty and actually help them push through the water just like the webbed feet of a duck. Now that it's fall, you'll start to see them in groups with other types of birds. In fact, let me show you a picture that I took on the same lake one fall where they were mixed in with swans and other birds. If you get a chance to ever see one of their relatives, the purple gallinule, it looks like a colorful version of the American coot. 
has purple and blue on it. One winter, I was in the Everglades, just walking down a path, and there was a purple gallon of milk, just out for a walk, walking right on the lily pads. And because it wasn't nesting, it was very unafraid of people and just walked right on by. So the American Coots relatives, the common gallinule and the purple gallinule, definitely look very similar in shape and size. So if you get a chance to get out and enjoy fall colors and you're driving past a large lake in the Twin Cities, like Lake Minnetonka or Parker's Lake in Plymouth, keep an eye out for these large rafts of small black birds with white beaks, sometimes in groups of hundreds or even thousands. Now you know it's the American coot or mud hen. This is naturalist Elise. I hope you are getting outside and enjoying these beautiful fall colors. Have a great day. Thank you, Elise, for teaching us all about the American coot. Such a fun, goofy-looking bird and uh, one of the fun migrators that is going through the state. And, of course, there are still migrators going through, so it is technically still fall. But like I said at the top of the episode, starting next week, it will be the beginning of our winter season. So you'll have to stop by next Monday at 10 a.m. to check that out. Also, uh, check out your screen right after this with the end uh, titles there. There's going to be a list of upcoming programs you can come out and do at Lowry and H Center. We're excited to have you out. Things don't stop just because winter comes. We've got all kinds of fun stuff going on all year. Thanks for stopping in, and we'll see you all next week or even sooner out at the Lowry Nature Center. <laughs>